Welcome to the Applied Blockchain Podcast, where blockchain technology and innovation are in the spotlight. My name is Adi Benari, and I'm the founder and CEO of Applied Blockchain, and I'll be your host as we dive into relaxed conversations with industry experts and thought leaders to get their views on what they're building, the Web3 ecosystem, and its transformative impact on the modern world. All right, Francis Dean, uh, welcome to the Applied Blockchain Podcast. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you for having me. So, for our listeners, uh, Francis, you're the COO of VAC. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background? How did you end up here? Sure. So, uh, I spent um, a number of years uh, with BP. Um, I started out in uh, government and public affairs, looking at corporate social responsibility. Uh, and moved into um, uh, integrated supply and trading in the project space uh, with um, business change as a focus. Um, and uh, when I left BP, I went to Gazprom. I was the head of financial operations there. Again, um, much more focused on um, change and evolution of processes. Um, and then... Um, when I was at Gazprom, I got involved in um, a forum that EY um, conduct every year. So um, they conduct a technical challenge, and this was back, I believe, in 2016. And the technical challenge was around blockchain. And so I got involved in, um, you know, as a, uh, um, you know, mentoring one of the um, the entrants to the competition. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, as a consequence, after I, I left Gazprom, I ended up, um, project managing, uh, a blockchain experiment, um, for a company called BTL. And, uh, that, uh, coincidentally was delivering into, um, BP, one of the participants. Yeah. Uh, of that particular experiment, and I happened to be interviewing at the time to go to return to BP, um, and so it was all very uh, serendipitous, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then when I took up my role uh, at BP, which is was in finance transformation, I managed to uh, inveigle myself into uh, looking after the governance of uh, all the blockchain experiments they were doing in uh, integrated supply and trading. And VACT at, at was BP. one of those, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was at BP at the time, and 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 VACT was one of the experiments that uh, they were involved in, and yeah, I was lucky enough to uh, to be able to participate um, in that al- almost full time towards the end, and then of course um, once VACT had incorporated, uh, I got the opportunity to uh, to to. To jump into this kind of joint venture, and that's what I did, and uh, it's been a wonderful uh, and exciting journey. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, amazing. Uh, I didn't know some of these things. <laughs> uh, and and for those of you who don't know, we we work on the same office. Right. We're, yes. we're both based at Level Thirty Nine, so mm-hmm. we see each other uh, very often. But but some of these things are really new to me. So for example, and we share some common threads here. Um, so so we we took part in the EY challenge. As well. Ah. Uh, so I was working with a company called Tally Sticks at the time. Yes, I remember. I yes. remember. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and so we took part in that challenge as well. And that's how we met Shell. Ah. Uh, yeah. And then eventually we went yeah. through Shell's challenge, and, and that's how we, we got the project with them, and then they invested and so on. Um, so that's, uh, so yeah, so I didn't realize our paths crossed then. Yeah, yeah. And of course, BTL were in the office with us here as well. They were, and, yeah. And, uh, I, when I first yeah. came here, it was with BTL, yeah. Yeah. And then the, um, the person that really, I guess, sponsored us in Shell uh, was Mariam Ayati, who uh, also oh, set yes. up, uh, was yeah. one of the people that set up VACT in the first place. And, uh, and she's on another podcast uh, with, with her current venture as well. It's a yeah, very it's a, small world. It's a small world. Small world. Okay, good, good. Um, super interesting. So, Francis, obviously you're VAC now. So, can you tell us a bit about what is VAC? For those of you who, those, those listeners who've not come across it before. Sure. Um, so, we are a, uh, a platform for post trade processing of physical oil commodities. Um, so, after a, a trade is done, 
Um, what that does is receive uh, the trade facts from our customers via an API. Uh, we match those trade details, so we validate them on the day of trade, um, and then we confirm them um, during the, the contracting process. Um, and then we provide um, um, the uh, facility to manage the logistics uh, of that trade, so moving the molecules from you know point A to point B. Right. Okay. So there's some things I know about this space, and there's some things I don't. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, how? So so the trade has already happened. Correct. Right? Yeah, we are and, not a trading. Firm. And are these these are over the counter trades. So these are people phoning each other up or, or emailing and, and yes, agreeing. Yes, they could be. They could be over the counter. They could be brokered trades, or right. they could be trades that happen on. Um, ice or the platzi window or uh, ale for instance okay and 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 when we say the trade is already done does that mean they've already signed some documents or they've already formally consummated it in some way or is that when they come to the platform um i mean the trade is done when the trader and his count his or her counterpart say Done. done. So, okay. um, you know, so in all kind of um, trading houses and, and majors, you will find that, you know, the trading lines are monitored. So um, if there's ever a dispute about the terms of the deal, they can go back to, right. to tapes. Um, but there are um, formal processes in place once that trade has been done. So typically in a, in a trading organisation, um, you know, it'll be a, a deal that's done over the phone, the trade deals will say done, um, and then either the trader or a trade analyst will enter that trade into their risk system where they manage their, their risk and P&L. Yeah. Um, so what, and then, and then there's a, a recap process. So between them, They'll say, they'll, they'll exchange an email typically with just a, a small number of key trade facts, you know, price, product, date, et cetera. Um, and then someone will enter that trade into the risk system. Um, after it's being entered into the risk system, typically then you have, um, you, you would issue a, a contract to your, to your counterpart. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so where VACT comes in is that, um, A, we can validate those trade facts. So, uh, and this is kind of the, almost the textbook, textbook business case for distributed ledger. Mm -hmm. So we've done a trade, we've exchanged an email recap, and we think we've got it right. But actually, you pop those details into your system. I pop them into my system, we could still have it wrong. It's like any conversation. And not find out until, mm -hmm. you know, invoice time yeah. or until somebody um, makes a miss hedge or, you know, another error that would, would seriously degrade the value of that trade. Um, and so, you know, the case for, for, for that and for trade validation followed by, um, you know, legal confirmation on the platform in a digital form um, is exactly that. Well, actually, if VACT takes your trade details and my trade details and matches them and highlights any discrepancies immediately for us to resolve, then you know there's your there's your business case for for distributed ledger straight off the bat. Yeah. Okay, and I guess before VACT, each party would enter it into their system. Mm -hmm. And then, what, there'd be more emails going back and forth, maybe, or that would be it? Potentially, or, or as I said, you know, you wouldn't know that there was a problem until right. you came to issue the invoice. Um, or, you know, uh, as I said before, if somebody made a, a, a miss hedge and actually, you know, the value of the trade was, was um, adversely affected yeah. by that. Yeah. Okay. And, and where does blockchain come into this, or distributed ledger? I mean, how does that... Um, so you have uh, an immutable record on the VAT platform. So um, that doesn't mean that we can't make a mistake, but it means that that mistake is transparent to both of us. Right. Okay. 
Um, and, and presumably the data is, uh, I mean, has the data handled? Is it, is it kind of, does each party have their own copy of their trades or are they kind of pulled together or how does that? So, um, they would enter mm -hmm. the trade initially in their own risk system and yeah. then um, we have an API that we have developed with our customers over a yeah. period of time, um, which takes um, those trade facts into their pod on VAT. Mm. So um, remembering that VAT has no sight and no visibility whatsoever of the data of our customers. We, so we are a platform. They have a pod on our platform yeah. where those tra trade details are, you know, immutably recorded yeah. um, and can be compared uh, with their uh, counterpart. But VAT itself has no visibility whatsoever of those facts. Okay, so those, so I guess this is where the distributed ledger comes in. Everyone has the copy of their trades that they're involved in. If I create a trade, I share it with my counterpart. Correct. The counterpart can see it and compare, and that's how you can make sure there are no Correct. problems. But there's a, 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 there's a, I guess, a, an underlying ledger of hashes, I think. Uh, which kind of records the evidence of uh, those agreements and, and that data, but that but the other parties can't see what's behind. Correct. Right. Uh, and just remind us what what's the technology that's being used? So we right? use Quorum. Quorum. Yeah. Okay, and that's kind of the private blockchain version of Ethereum. It is a private Ethereum. permissioned blockchain based on Ethereum. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess there's there's a few things going on here. One is that the counterparts have a system that they can use together, and they can do that comparison and they can remove any errors in what are presumably high value trades, and so any errors can have meaningful repercussions. So there's already a lot of value there. Um, but I guess the, the 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 reason why that wasn't solved before was because each party has their own systems and very closely guarded data. And so to share that with anyone would be very difficult. And so through this system, you can you can do that matching comparison and remove those discrepancies or highlight them uh, without having to share the data with anyone else except your counterpart. Absolutely correct. Okay, perfect. Uh, and you've got the immutability behind it as well. Yes. So if you if you see a discrepancy and then somebody says, oh well, that's not what really happened. We've got this in our system, then. You can always go back and say, well, actually, there's a, there's a series of hashes here that prove that this was the data that was entered at that point Absolutely. In time. So um, in the module that we're talking about here, we call this module Vishur. Um, <clears throat> and our counterparts um, can communicate with each other. So if they um, see a discrepancy highlighted by the system, they can actually um, contact each other on the back platform uh, to say, well, actually, you know, you said, you know, 2,000 metric tons and, uh, you know, I have 2,500. Yeah. Um, the, um, it's, it's vital to note that that correction of a trade fact would be made in their own risk system and flow back through to that. Um, so that, that again, um, wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be corrected in that. Itself. Right. So there, I think it's the ETRM. Correct. ETRM, that, that's kind of their master record. Yes, absolutely. For, from their perspective, and that interfaces into VACT, and then that's how the exchange of Correct. information happens. Okay, perfect. Um, and then presumably after that, once you've got the facts aligned, then the rest of the processes can flow from there with more confidence. Yes. Right? So the alignment that we're talking about is what we call trade validation. Um, and then the, the process that um, follows that in the contract space is called confirmation. Um, so the trade validation is typically carried out by a trader or a trade analyst. It's not the same in every company. Roles differ, mm -hmm. but in general terms. Um, and then your confirmations um, process, which is centered on the contracts process, uh, is carried out by your contract analyst, typically sometimes operators, but more often than not, um, contract analysts. Um, and what our customers have started to do is in the Northwest Europe barge space, um, they started to enter into um, bilateral master trade agreements. Um, and then we they have captured um, though the, the details of those master trade agreements in a template 
um, that template is entered into that. And again, that template allows them to match those details, make sure there's no discrepancies, mm -hmm. and digitally and legally confirm on the platform without having to produce a contract. Another contract. Okay. Because you've yeah. got a, a kind of overarching contract. Correct. Which you can then... Yeah. Uh, so that's that been in. very prevalent in the gas and power space for a number of years um, yeah. with with um, EFITnet or EFIT agreement. Um, and now, um, yes, as I said, our, our customers are entering into these bilateral um, master trade agreements and, you know, the ability to digitally and automatically if they set if they um allow that setting uh and there's no discrepancies that process is is also can also be automated okay um amazing and uh, wh where's this at in terms of it's a live platform it's been used in the industry what, what's yes. the sort of uh, I guess traction usage behind it so at the yeah. moment um we are able to handle uh all trades and all products in the Northwest Europe barge market. Mm -hmm. So, um, middle distillates, light ends, bio, um, fuel oil, etc. Yeah, and the platform's been live for a few years. Right? Uh, yeah. Yes, I mean, um, in the barge market, um, since I think February 2019, not in yeah. all markets um, at that point. Um, but yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Um, Francis, tell me what's, uh, what, what, what's your focus now on the platform? So what are the things that you're, you're really thinking about now and, and prioritizing? Um, really the, the scale up of our visual model. So as I said, we're live in, um, all, all products, um, for Northwest Europe barges. Um, but actually we can accept you know, almost any type of trade via our trade API. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to scale very quickly into other markets and other regions uh, for Visha. So that's the trade validation um, and confirmation. And then um, we have another module called V Actuals. So, you know, our customers are not only the, the majors and the trading houses, but also the ecosystem of customers uh, around the trade. So um, uh, terminals, um, inspectors uh, in particular. And so um, what we're doing with the actuals, again, is um, developing an API um, where actually they can send um, back to the VACT platform, to our customers pod, mm -hmm. um, the actual amount that has either been loaded or discharged depending on the income terms of that trade um, and then the customer can pass that back to their risk system so they get you know accurate and and timely data for invoicing purposes and right. obviously the calculation of PE. right on the settlement okay very good mm. very good that's i mean it's a it's obviously a lot to cover with a traditional industry and large companies <laughs> and they all have their processes and their ways of doing things and so on. They so do, yeah. It's, it's a challenge. Not, yeah, it's, it's not challenge. an easy thing to achieve, but we talked about the value at the beginning. It's obviously, it, it, it comes back in terms of uh, you know, having a smoother process and, and taking out any errors early and so on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the tagline on our, our website is protecting the value of, of your trade. And that's yeah. exactly what we do. You know, the value of a trade is eroded by inefficient um, processing and so we're trying to um, make that more efficient with everybody. I always say you know the thing that um, brought the members of the consortium together in the first place um, was was blockchain and the promise of you know that that trustlessness Mm -hmm. um, for efficiency purposes right? um, yes for yeah. efficiency and for risk purposes yeah. um, but the thing that's going to keep them together is a fantastic platform that's easy to use and yeah and reliable and just does the just works just works right? just works yeah okay. very good and then um, what are what are the plans for the future like where's where, where's this all going well <laughs> <laughs> um so good as question. i said the the you know the the big 
sort of immediate um, priority is that scale up of be sure to to many other markets um, and so know, increasing the footprint so yeah. increasing the footprint um, uh, globally essentially yeah. so that's that's where we're going um, and <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of potential. You, you, you've obviously got the interface with blockchain technology. You know, we won't get into details, but we can imagine uh, you know, this uh, kind of panning out in different ways as the platform matures and as the, um, as the participants uh, maybe get more comfortable. And, and, you know, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so um, I mean, it's not just scale up of be sure if be sure scales, then obviously the actuals will also scale. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's scaling not just with the with the um, uh, the trading participants globally, but also with the inspectors, the terminals. You know, in the future potentially, you know, agents, brokers. You know, that whole. Um, ecosystem of, of yeah. platform participants. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I think this is, I mean, I'm looking at it from, from I guess, from our angle, from a personal angle. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that go on in the space in relation to this technology. Um, I got into it in the first place, actually, because coming from an enterprise background and, and, and a bank, actually, and looking at the efficiencies uh, it could bring for companies working together. Um, and there's obviously been, there's a lot of headlines, there's crypto, there's the technology itself evolving, there's all sorts of things going on. Um, and the thing I think is most interesting for me are, are the, the sort of step-by-step -step things that happen in the background, right? So the maturing and the progress that you don't hear about in the headlines. Yeah, yeah. Right? So actually taking large companies through this type of journey uh, is is not a trivial task in any in, in not any way. Not at all. Right? Yeah. Um, but it's not headline grabbing, right? And and but it's meaningful. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think that's why it's it's important to know that there's there's this work going on in the background and it and it, it happens in different areas and it happens at different at a different pace. But it, but it's all meaningful and uh, and and I think it needs to be uh, it needs to be surfaced. So good. Thank you very much for that. Uh, last question that uh, that I ask. You know, I usually ask everybody on this podcast if you'd like to recommend a book or, or another podcast maybe or a film or something. <laughs> um, so I'd like to recommend um, Platform Revolution by um, Sangeet Paul Chowdhury. Um, so Paul came to um, address our board, uh, I think it was last year, um, uh, just to to talk about you know the evolution of platforms um, generally right. and how that kind of you know fitted into that into that world uh, it was it was very interesting and uh, I know the board were extremely engaged in the conversation so yeah I think it's a good read okay so I, I haven't come across this across this I'm definitely going to, <laughs> to get a copy um, but what's just at a very high level what is thesis or what's the What's the, what's the message? Oh, maybe that'll be a spoiler. Yes. Yeah, okay. Spoiler alert, okay. Spoiler. Alert. spoiler alert. I'll, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'm going to read it, and and uh, and maybe others will as well. Francis. Great. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time. Appreciate You're welcome. It. Thank you for listening to the Applied Blockchain Podcast. Make sure you follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for more updates. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, please let us know by leaving a review and clicking subscribe. Until next time.